So here are the must-watch videos from the wingsound.com community. That's right, these videos come from members just like you from all over the world who've uploaded their videos to wingsound.com to share their knowledge of music production with the community. So if you have anything you'd like to share, simply upload your video to wingsound.com, let us know about it, and we might feature it in this segment. Sounds Logical shows you how to mix kick and snare drums within Logic Studio. The kick is coming out of this channel, and the snare is coming out of this channel, which allows us to mix them independently. It definitely sounds a bit weak. Well, my favorite thing to do with snares is to actually distort them. I like to add a bit of high harmonic distortion, which I find gives that sort of punch and crack that I'm looking for. Um, my favorite to plug in to do that with is Camel Audio's Camel Fat, because uh, it has four different distortion settings and they all sound great to my ears. But because I want to keep this um, neutral, I want to use only Logic plugins. For today, we're going to replace that with Logic's Distortion 2. So here's the distortion plugin. I'm going to choose the bitey uh, algorithm because that's what I want. I want bite. Dream Slide Production explains how to set up your ins and outs in Pro Tools. Say your EQ is always connected to the end of your interface on 1 and 2. You can uh, name it as such as the EQ out goes into 1 and 2. The compressor out goes into 3 and 4 or you can even break it down further. Now these are all stereo setups here um, to handle two inputs at a time, but you can open a little folder kind of thing here and it brings down a mono signal path as well. Now say you always use the same mic, say my five and six mic I always use for when I'm recording a rock band or a drum set rather, and I use it for the kick drum. Now granted it says kick drum for 3 and 4, you can break it down even further. Instead of having kick drum L and kick drum R, let's say for microphone in my number 5 I always use the beater mic for a 5 and for um, 6 I always use uh, the sound hole mic. So granted this top part here says kick drum. When you really Just the Music Man demonstrates how to control amplitude with an external MIDI device. Good. I'm using a Behringer FCB 1010 and this is my handy Mac editor IFCB which I use for all my FCB 1010 programming. It works really really well. So what I think we'll do is again Amplitube is looking for CC 1 through 6 for the stop boxes slots 1 through 6. I think just for this we'll use 1 through 5. You can always add 6 that's not a problem and then two others to do the preset navigation and we'll use foot switch 9 and 10 for that. Now this editor uh, emulates the FCB 1010 pretty much exactly. As you can see this is a picture of an FCB 1010 at the top section here and then the bottom section is all the MIDI programming that is associated with it. And all you do is you simply click on each one of the switches as if you were stepping on any of those switches and it will show you what the associated uh, MIDI programming is for each one of those switches. So let's go into switch number one. As always, thanks so much for watching and if you took anything away from these tutorials, please share with your friends. That's right, and check out any of the videos featured in this segment or any videos featuring music production, Logic, Reason, Ableton, Pro Tools and so much more. Check out wingsound.com, the new social video network for audio creatives.